premier roots at East Wake High School. Tonight, it's the Warriors hosting the Smithfield Selma Spartans. And when it comes to basketball, basketball, this is just the tip off of the iceberg. This is the debut of Full of Focus on Hoops, where our three-point goal is to have players, coaches, and fans find us wishes come true. of a team championship. Are you looking to do it again as a coach this year? I'm looking to try to do it again. Uh, I believe the girls keep working hard. We had a potential to it. No. Cause I can, I can sub probably about anybody almost to, for us to go in. Um, as far as scoring wise, uh, I do try to get everybody involved because you never know who you're going to need in oh, the crunch yeah. time. So. Exactly. That's, that's the whole thing. Everybody work together. Now, I want to say a quick well, conference, our okay. first conference game. I got you. I yeah. got you. So hopefully it'll click by then, but we're working so hard, and I'm starting to see a lot of good things um, that we're doing, and as we keep building, building upon that, we'll be fine. Do you feel like you're missing anything? A state champion. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Which you already have. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. And you want that conference, too. Yeah, I want that, too. Is that something that, that fuels you in the off season? It is, because I'll be ready to get prepared for it, because it's something I tell the girls like at the beginning, that's one of our goals, and win a conference and end the state. The East Wake High girls basketball team finished 24-5 last year. Since the 2010-2011 season, the Warriors have averaged 20 wins per campaign. They have conquered 85% of that Greater News River Conference foes during that span. If you factor Southeast Raleigh out of the equation, they are 69-3 versus the league. So history tells you the Warriors will be good again. Mastery of Smithfield Selma verifies they are definitely off to a great start again. East Wake annihilated the Spartans 52-7. That's even with a non-stop clock the entire second half, 52-7. East Wake forced 37 Triple S errors, including 20 total steals. So while the blue and gold allowed four enemy points the first eight minutes, it permitted just three more the next 24. The spread was 13 to four at the one, then 33 to six at the half, then 48 to seven as coach Tony Dupree displayed the depth of her roster. The Warriors pounded the backboard for 22 offensive rebounds. They pummeled the scoreboard with balance galore. Nine of 11 players tallied at least two. Number 12, Tamira Knuckles, knocked in 11 and pulled six caroms. No surprise there, she is the leading returning point producer. Number 15, Amaya Brown, produced seven points and seven ricochet rips. Number 34, Jasmine Reed tickled the twine for eight clicks. She drained two trays. Number 33, Amira Godwin gobbled up seven points. Number 22, Makija Covington swiped six enemy possessions. Both Taylor Todd and Charlize Woodard netted five with one three-pointer each. Another 20 triumph gallop seems in perfect stride for this troop because their first steps out of the gates was a fierce stomp across the court. So I'm excited about our progress and where we make where we're going. It's just going to take a little time because of our lack of experience. Our, we're further along with our perimeter play. Right. Uh, 
because we got a couple guys who, compared to a lot of teams we play, are not really compared to them size-wise. They're around 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and they're coming off of football, so they're a little bit behind. Right. So I would say we're a little bit further along with our guard play right now, mm -hmm. but everybody's working hard every day to improve it with our post. One of our better players who was doing really well, he's injured right now, he should be out three or four games, Zeke Reigns, mm -hmm. when he comes back, I think he'll be a, he's a good leader, and he's one with experience. Uh, Anthony Jones has, has, has done well. Um, and very pleased with uh, the way James Simon and Rez Wynn come on. Our inside players, they're coming late. Right. But they, they, they're coming along fine. As well as uh, um, our guard play newcomers like Justin Torres, um, Evan King. Right. Yeah, Evan King has really took, he was a JV player last year. He's really gotten to another level. I think he's ready to step in and be a, a really good player for us. With this year's team, with a lot of new guys, it's mainly just learning the system. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what our expectation, our standards, how we want to play, um, playing hard, playing together, and just developing that chemistry and establishing roles. That's where we are now. You know, with Garner at the top, and I know Rosal's really improved this year, and I think everybody's improved. And I think as the year goes on, we're going to we're going to make up some ground. It's just going to take time, and mainly because our skill level, I'm really pleased with. I think because we worked hard in off season, it's just a matter of getting out there. You can't really you can't explain or teach experience. You got to get it. So I think as the season goes on, we're playing a good non-conference schedule, and that's going to prepare us when we get into the conference. So I think as the year goes on, we can uh, show a lot of improvement, and that's always our goal. Uh, it's always been. Let's be the best we can be at, at the end. It's a process, a journey, and I think we're that's going to work for this team. Yeah. Now, is the is the improvement? Is it the end result? Is what how where you want to get? Not always, but if you see that improvement and you see the guys grow and become better, better, better people on and off the court, then that that's that's all you can ask for. That's success. Despite 30 turnovers by the occasionally sloppy Warrior guys, the curtain raising contest turned out just fine. In fact, 78 to 59 fine in East Wake's favor. A 14 to 0 spurt the initial five minutes, three seconds, set the sage for a buzzer to buzzer buzz sawing by the host hot shots. The visiting Spartans never ever shaved the deficit below double digits from there. It was 16 to six, eight minutes deep, and 34 to 18 halfway through. The gap remained 54 to 37 following the third stanza, even after a steel spell that saw Smithville Selma cash in a series of Warrior ball handling butterfingers. Not always a thing of beauty, each weight collected plenty of individual outbursting beauty. Number three, Guy Ferguson, nailed 14 points, five rebounds, and five swipes. Number 30, Evan King, ruled the art with four triples, accounting for a majority of his 14 points. Number 23, Kelshawn Miller, was a double dealer killer, slashing 11 points plus 11 rebounds. Number two, Donald Pinckney, punctured the Spartan defense for 11 licks. Number four, Anthony Jones, jabbed eight points. And number 11, James Simon, secured a board bombarding 16 rebounds. Those 16 grabs included nine offensive claims to prolong scoring opportunities. Thus, a multitude of mistakes could be forgiven and forgotten. 
especially if these Warriors continue to run and gun right past brief stumbles and bumbles the rest of the schedule. Thank <laughs> you.